Today I've got a really good Hanover game. This is a ship that I haven't played a lot of, mostly down to the Satsuma being so good. I've talked about some of the problems that super ships bring to the game. But is Hanover that much worse than Satsuma? Is it also as big a problem? Well, I, I actually don't think so. I think some of these super ships are pretty good and interesting for this matchmaker. Hanover, for example, has its special ability after three accurate salvos, giving you better secondaries, more range. They also fire faster. Uh, I don't think it increases your accuracy though. So it's a decent upgrade to your secondaries, but it's not a game changer, 35% better dispersion like Satsuma has, for example. And unlike the Patri, we actually don't have very much range. Although we do have good 32 millimeters of overmatch, which is somewhat tough to deal with if you're a lower tier. Early game though is very hard for a Hanover. I find myself losing a lot of HP early on in games. This is pretty common for German battleships. They have massive superstructures that are quite easy to hit and do a lot of damage to. And of course they want to play at close range. They want to brawl. They're much better in that sub 15, but really sub 12 kilometer range is where these German battleships get really, really strong. And that's not all that possible. It's super ship tier that much these days. So even though this is a brawly secondary ship, I actually don't have it set up for full secondaries. I have a bit of a hybrid build here. We have main guns reload and we have main guns accuracy. So we're giving up secondary DPM and we're also giving up secondary range and accuracy. And we're gonna do really well with our main guns in this game. This is an example where, even though Hanover does have some wonky dispersion at times, uh, it can do very well as a full gunboat, but it doesn't have the range and the ability to just nuke everything across the map like the Satsuma, and to a lesser extent the Petri does. I think that Hanover is a good example of a super ship. I don't really think it's that unfair to fight against. It's a big, clumsy battleship with a lot of HP, but you can do some really good damage to it. And yeah, the overmatch, tough to deal with, but it's certainly not quite as bad as uh, Satsuma, for example. And this is really what I want to show you guys. Broadside Salem. That should be a lot of damage, right? Well, no, it's actually just one full pen. And he just sits there. He doesn't care. He, in fact, reverses. He notices me. He sees me because he's shooting at me and he just reverses right in front of me. And this is the problem with German battleships right here. We have a full accuracy build. We're as accurate as we possibly can be in our Hanover. And yeah, the Salem gets away with it. And that you might think is, well, we got a Citadel there at least. That might be a rarity you think, but no, Hanover certainly is not a very accurate or consistent battleship. And that's my main problem with it. It's this expectation that Hanover is a brawly secondary ship and one that I want to play at close range and brawl it out with. The meta doesn't really allow that, so that in itself makes me a little disappointed anytime I play this ship. And then of course we get into those situations where it's a broadside cruiser that I'm very confident a Satsuma would have dev struck 10 out of 10 times because I already had this special gimmick built up. I could have pushed the F key on a Satsuma and had perfect dispersion and destroyed that Salem. That's the problem with Hanover, I think. It's not that the Hanover is necessarily such a bad ship at super ship tier, uh, maybe more like a tier 11 power level, certainly. It's just that Satsuma feels more like a tier 12, and I would much, much rather play a ship that's good in the long range meta than one that wants to play at closer ranges. So let me know what you think in the comments below about the Hanover specifically. Um, I will be playing it some more. I think I wanna try out a few other builds on it, but it's not, the end of the world. We've already done a, nearly 100k in six minutes, so I'm complaining here, I know, but we're still doing some pretty good damage. That's the thing. It's hard to keep that in perspective for me since I'm always itching to brawl in these German battleships. I always want to get close range, and then when I'm not allowed to, just frustrates me a little bit, and then seeing the bad dispersion at long range, which we all know is going to happen, that just makes me even more frustrated, <laughs> which I really shouldn't let frustrate me since German battleships are good at close range like I've said maybe the best thing they can do is perform a fighting retreat that seems to be where these German battleships often have amazing games where people are pushing into you and you're able to angle properly maneuver and use this big HP pool 
relatively tanky ship to make it very, very costly for the enemy team to push in. That's what we're going to do a little bit here, although uh, not before I uh, get a little bit too aggressive again and lose a little bit more HP. The reason being that most German battleships have pretty good firing angles backwards. This is something you're going to really notice on the Kerr first, and to a lesser extent, uh, the Preussen, the two tier 10 battleships uh, in the German line there. I suppose Schlieffen is... Schlieffen's a different story. It's a battle cruiser, just a secondary monster. These are more in line with the Hanover, the Preussen, and the GK. They have really good firing angles backwards, but less so shooting forwards. Hanover finally gets decent firing angles shooting forwards, so we can angle properly even if we're pushing in. But that's not everything, of course, to winning an engagement. A big portion of this game is the advantage that you gain by the enemy team being forced to push into you. As, uh, yeah, yeah, we don't even do much damage to the sail of a cat. <laughs> I promise we'll get him yet. I hope. Uh, but this is something that you have to understand. It is a lot easier to understand in destroyer engagements because it's much more obvious. Whoever's pushing in is at a humongous disadvantage. Not only are you pushing into more enemy territory, bringing in the potential for help for the enemy team, more importantly, you have to lead much farther when you're pushing in. The enemy ship that's running away, you have to lead in front of them. If they're getting further away from you, you have more lead time. And in DD engagements, this is humongous because, of course, DDs have small floaty shells that lose a lot of their velocity as the ranges get bigger. Battleships, cruisers, it still is a important thing to consider, but to a lesser extent, especially for fighting a Satsuma or a Patri that have really good velocity out to any range. But it still matters. I do think it still matters and is something that the Hanover is still really good at. We're already up to 160,000 damage, so it's not like this is a bad game at all. And this fighting retreat that we're going to do here is hopefully going to help our team win. As the Satsuma pushes in, as the Ohio pushes in, they're pushing into a crossfire. We have a Jean Bart that's kind of tucked away behind the island there for a little bit, and hopefully we can create a bit of a crossfire. Even though Hanover isn't necessarily the best at range, still, a broadside Satsuma is a large target, so hopefully we're gonna be able to hit that all right. And this is what I'm constantly needing to think about when it comes to playing a German battleship. I'm not at my strongest when I'm in a close range brawl or pushing into people, I'm at my absolute strongest as a German battleship when I'm kiting away, when I'm holding back the enemy's push and slowly giving up ground as I fight them. That's the real strength of German battleships in this game. And it's hard for me to remember that because secondaries are fun. It's fun to be in close range, seeing all of the action, the, well, all the shells firing off. It's a lot of fun. But you notice that's the very first time we've actually managed to use our secondaries this game. And I think that's going to be about it for the secondaries in this match, actually. Two secondary hits, that is all. And yet we're still going to have a solid game in a German battleship. I got to remind myself that these ships aren't just for secondaries. Perhaps that is the role of something like a Schlieffen. You play them just for those secondaries. The main line can definitely play main guns and do pretty well. I think I probably would have had a similarly good game in a Satsuma or a Patri. Obviously, worse armor on those two ships, so given up how much uh, the enemy team has been shooting at me and how much damage we've tanked so far, it's possible we would have died in those circumstances. Although, I'd probably try to argue that the Satsuma or Patri would have done a little more damage at longer ranges, meaning that we probably would have taken a little less damage over time from these guys, uh, but it still performed reasonably well. So Hanover isn't necessarily the worst super ship you can get, but I think it is outperformed still by the Satsuma, certainly, and maybe even the Petri. There's a little bit of differences there. The Petri is certainly a little better at range. Although, if you are getting decent dispersion, like you saw there, 18,000 damage into a Satsuma, it's pretty good. And of course, the Hanover currently has the most HP in the entire game. That's something I definitely should be mentioning here. Our heals are each healing us for over 21,000 HP, and we have 126,000 HP to start with. So it is a ship that's going to take a long time to deal with if it's played like this. If you're doing that fighting retreat, you're not over committing into torpedoes, into carriers, 
keep in mind, there was a, uh, I believe there's a Malta this game, so we didn't really have to deal with it as much, because I think we played a little bit more passive, and we didn't present ourselves as an easy target, trying to push in and get huge value out of our secondaries. And it worked out. It worked out pretty well. 240,000 damage and counting is pretty good. And I think this is how I'm going to try and play my German battleships going forward. Even at lower tiers, I think it is possible to play like this and do a reasonably good job. However, there are some maps that are very close range friendly, where there's islands that allow you to push up. And that's where a hybrid build that we'll get into once uh, this game's over is going to be what I'll probably run. Where in those specific maps and matchmaker combos where I can get some brawling value, I still want to be able to do that. Obviously, it's a lot of fun. The marketing material for this game is all about brawling secondary close quarters battleships, right? So I do still very much enjoy that. I don't want to give up all of that potential for those odd times that the matchmaker and map pool does allow for it. But having some of this long-range accuracy, as you can see, it worked out pretty nicely in this game. And it's just the one lone destroyer left that our CV goes in spots. And if you'll notice, we actually smashed this, <laughs> this Yamagiri earlier on. Some of our best dispersion this game is actually against the destroyers. I don't know if that's going to be a consistent thing, but I do tend to notice that when I shoot at DDs, things get pretty accurate all of a sudden. It's kind of odd how that works. Broadside cruiser, battleship sometimes, just the worst dispersion ever. But a DD shows up 10 kilometers and suddenly I'm hitting like six out of eight shells. It's crazy. Nearly 3K base, pretty solid, although no secondary hits, unfortunately. As for the build, it currently looks a little something like this. We do have secondaries, as you can see. We still want to get some value out of them. And I've given up concealment for the manual secondary uh, skill. That I think is going to be the best here. Since, as you notice, we do use up our heals in some of these long games, and I want to make use of Emergency Repair Expert. Fire Prevention is a must on a ship this big. <laughs> it, it's very easy to get double fires on a Hanover that does not have Fire Prevention. AR makes a lot of sense, I think. Long range secondaries over basics. It's arguable, but I've talked about this before. I want to take two out of the three of basic survivability, damage control system in the fourth slot, and the fire flag. Two out of the three. So, little spoiler for uh, what's to come. Yeah, we're taking damage control system. Grease the gears is so nice on a ship like this because we're constantly wanting to be maneuvering, turning, not just sitting still. That's a very easy way to die in your German battleships. We wanna be trying to avoid shells hitting that superstructure. And grease the gears allows us to keep our guns on target more often when we're maneuvering like that gives us a little more flexibility in close range situations as well. Emergency Repair Specialist, it doesn't help a ton, but neither are any of these other first tier skills. So that's what I've gone with on this one. Equipment, we are main battery mod three and aiming systems. Like I said, we're not going full secondaries here. Although I do want to keep them alive. I do think that the main guns are tanky enough that I don't need to spec into that here. And then yeah, Damage Control System Mod 2, and the Fire Flag. Those two give me enough fire reduction that I think I can get away with adding a little bit of secondaries on the commander side of things. So that is the Hanover currently. I don't think it's as good as the Satsuma, but it can do some really good work as we've seen. And I'll likely be playing it some more as I have these super ship missions to go through. There's a lot of good stuff to be unlocked there, and it seems like we're getting pushed to playing these ships more and more. So. May as well try and have fun in this mid-range brawler, kiter style of ship. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.